Hello, my lovely kitty cats. How is everyone doing today? I hope you all are well because I am well as well. Although, um, I have to say that I'm a little shook today. Um, and I <sighs> fell down uh, the rabbit hole yesterday um, that we call YouTube. And um, maybe I'm late coming to the party. I probably am because I usually am late coming to the party. However, I ran across um, these videos of um, drag kids. Yes, you heard me right. If you haven't seen these videos or heard about these videos... There is apparently this new movement called the Drag Kids. Um, very similar to the 1990s era Club Kids from New York City in the limelight. Um, and we'll get back to that in a second. But um, there is this 11-year-old kid from, uh, Brooklyn, New York. He is an 11-year-old drag queen. Now, I have made some notes here, so if you see me looking down at your papers, because... When I get on a topic like this, my brain goes a million miles a minute. I get very twisted around and I end up not hitting all the points that I want to hit. So I have written down some bullet points that I want to make sure I hit. So this 11 year old drag kid um, has become a uh, spokesperson uh, for LGBTQ community. And he's being called the poster child of the LGBTQ community. Well, Nobody asked me if he was my poster child, um, child being the operative word. Now, I have talked in depth on my channel about my relationship with Tony, um, my life as a drag performer, the fact that I am... 56 years old, and I am transgendered. The fact that I will not, at 56 years old, make the transition into being a woman. And so, I watched all of these videos on line on YouTube and what I'm seeing mostly are straight people talking about how disgusting this young child is and how awful his parents are for letting him do what he's doing. The only LGBT opinions that I've seen are fellow drag queens or other gay men 
praising this young child. Now, mind you, this child has also been on Good Morning America, The Today Show, numerous other shows, magazines, uh, you know, photo shoots, layouts. He's got an Instagram page that has well over 100,000 followers. Why is the mainstream media praising this child for his bravery to come out and live his truth? RuPaul has called him the future of America. God help us all. And, you know, when did RuPaul become um, the end-all, be-all voice of the gay community either? Um, now, I have to say, I've never been a huge fan of RuPaul, and um, I've got a little bit of history, and I'm not going to go into that. People who know me well, know me personally, probably know the story, but I'm not going to retell it because, you know, quite frankly, um, I prefer not to get sued today. So, you know, let's just say that um, there are a lot of times I roll my eyes at RuPaul. Um, the future of America. Wow. Wow where little kids can run amok and do whatever they want? I mean, when I was 11 years old, you know, had I been told by my parents that, you know, I could do whatever I want and I didn't have a curfew, um, I would have stayed up all night and slept all day and ate candy for dinner and chocolate cake for breakfast. I mean, limits, people. Uh, there's got to be boundaries. You you are the adult and you're, you're a parent. And with parenting comes some responsibilities. Now, I do give kudos to his parents for accepting who he is and letting him express who he is and not tell him that because he wants to wear women's, or not women's, but because he wants to wear girls' clothes, he's bad or he's wrong or he's punished, you know, that's bad too. But if this kid wants to play dress up, play dress up in your house, right? I mean, when I was 11 years old, yes, I already knew that I was attracted, number one, attracted to boys. Number two, felt like a girl inside, wanted to be a girl. And, you know, wrapped myself up in bedsheet gowns and with the hairbrush microphone and performed in front of the mirror in the bathroom. Yeah, I did. And that's fine. And any child that wants to do that, any child that wants to play with Barbie dolls as opposed to trucks and a football should not be punished for that. But they also should not be prancing around in, 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 okay, the mother says that it's not provocative and there's nothing sexual about letting Desmond dress in drag. 
there's nothing sexual about drag. Well, let me tell you, having been a drag queen, yes, there is. It's all about sex. It's all about the sexy costume and the boobs pushed up and the leg out and the butt cheeks hanging out. Watch RuPaul's Drag Race sometime. See how many of those queens walk down the runway with their butts hanging out. And, la and you know, and more hanging out. Um, sexually explicit numbers, songs, uh, you know... For the drag queen, it is not about having a sexual thrill by dressing as a woman. For the drag queen. But the drag queen's persona is to give the audience, the people that are watching you, a thrill. So, that brings me to the latest adventure of uh, Desmond is Amazing. Now, about a month or so ago, uh, Desmond is Amazing performed in a drag show in a gay bar in Brooklyn. The gay bar is the... A uh, $3 bill. And it's apparently kind of a seedy... Uh, kind of a seedy bar. Um, apparently there's some really kind of... Kind of seedy rules. Um, it, it's really a bit sketch. Uh, you have to... Hand over your cell phone when you enter the bar, and it's locked in a bag, which then you're allowed to carry, but it has to stay locked in that bag the whole time you're in the club. And once you leave the club, you are not allowed to come back in. Now, the only thing I can think of about you know, locking up your cell phone is the owners of this club don't want people videotaping what goes on in the club. Somebody did, though. And they taped Desmond is Amazing performing at this club. Now, I've watched a lot of different people give their opinion on this particular part. And I've heard everything from it's a strip club to um, Desmond did a strip tease on stage to he was topless, wearing booty shorts, um, blah, blah, blah. You know... While old, old men pedophiles threw dollar bills at him. Well, these people will also say, now I didn't watch the video. I didn't watch it and I have no desire to watch it. Not going to watch it. But then they turn around and report on it. And they report the facts incorrectly. It was a gay bar. It was a drag show. He was not stripping and dancing around a pole, a stripper pole. In the drag show, there's such a thing as the costume reveal. It's what's called the costume reveal. Where the drag queen will come out in some sort of cover-up and then whip that open and she's got on her fabulous costume underneath. That was part of Desmond's act. Now, what he revealed underneath, people are going nuts over. 
Okay, he was in, yes, a full face of makeup with a blonde wig on. He performed the number Just a Girl by No Doubt. Um, so he was lip syncing and, yes, moving about the stage, as drag queens will do. Um, under his, under his reveal, um, coat, he had on a crop top, um, tank top, almost like a workout top. Um, now that's one thing people are going nuts about, that his midriff was exposed. He did not have on booty shorts. He had on long pants like a track suit, like a workout suit. He had on, as far as I could tell, like saddle shoes. Um, and yes, people were tipping him. At a normal drag show, it is customary for the audience to tip the performer. And if the performer is in the middle of the performance and can't get to the end of the stage to pick up your dollar bill, then audience members will throw that on stage for you. You know, again, they made it sound like this kid was stripping on a stripper pole and old men with their tongues hanging out, drooling, were throwing dollar bills on the stage for this kid. Now, I am really sick of hearing that, you know, every gay man is a pedophile. Okay, because I sure am not interested in a young prepubescent child. The majority of gay men are not pedophiles. Just like the majority of straight men are not pedophiles. But there are straight male pedophiles. Do I think it's okay to let your 11-year-old child uh, be in a drag show at a gay bar at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning? No. No. No, no, no. I do not. Okay, that is really just asking for trouble. Because the majority of gay men are not pedophiles. But what if there's that one, that one person in the audience that is twisted, that does get off watching little kids prance around provocatively? It only takes one. Desmond's mother has been quoted as saying, if you look at Desmond and the first thing you think about is sex, then there is something wrong with you, not us. Well, guess what? That's the same argument that we've heard for years from toddlers and tiaras. It's the same argument we've heard for years about the kitty beauty pageants. Where I'm going to dress up, you know, my five, six, seven, eight year old in a ton of makeup, big hair a provocative little short skirt, little outfit, and let them go on stage and do a cutesy cutesy rendition of Big Spender.
okay? Um, I ain't buying it. I'm not buying it. Um, we all know what happened to John Benet Ramsey. And I hate to say it, but, you know, is Desmond is amazing, the next John Benet? I certainly, God, pray to God, I hope not. I pray, dear God, please protect this child. I've also heard people say that 11 years old, it's the parents who are making this kid do this. Well, I can tell you that 11, at 11 years old, like I said before, I knew I was attracted to boys. I knew that I felt like a girl. I knew I wanted to wear girls' clothes. I, I, I knew I loved playing dress up. You know, but I was not prancing around on stage in front of adult men at 11 years old. At 11 years old, I was putting on bedsheet gowns and performing for my family in my bedroom, which is where I think that kids should be. Kudos to the parents for not suppressing his personality. Because by 11 years old, I mean, you, come on, you're in sixth grade. You know, I did know I was not attracted to girls. I did know that I wanted to be a girl. I did know, now, I mean, I didn't have, I didn't have any, at 11 years old, I didn't have any sexuality yet. Other than, you know, kind of kissing maybe and making out. Um, and you know what you hear at school, you know, the boys bragging about, you know, telling lies about, you know, the little girls and how far they got, you know, on their date. Um, so, I mean, I don't think in... Desmond's mind, it's really sexual yet. Um, but it's a very, and I hate to say this term because I've heard this so much, it's a very slippery slope from playing dress up at home to performing live on stage in a gay bar. Understand? Um, if you want to play dress up, dude, more power to you. Play dress up at home. Dress all you want. Put on your, your you know, little pink dress and your mommy's high heels and some makeup on your face and some earrings and... Go to town in the mirror. You want to take pictures? Go to town. You want to make a little video of you performing? Have at it. But this is not something that should be made public at 11 years old. Just worried about this, this little kid. And I don't want to make this video too much longer, but Desmond is Amazing has also appeared on a podcast called The Pew. Now, The Pew, The View, only The Pew, is hosted by um, Ernie Glam and Michael Alley. And if you don't know who Michael Alleg is, if you remember back to a film, it was supposedly the true story of Michael Alleg, who was a self-professed uh, king of the club kids. And 
um, he brutally murdered um, his drug dealer, Angel. Um, he and his roommate, Freeze, um, bashed Angel's head with a hammer, put him in the bathtub full of ice. A couple days later, um, the body started to smell. So Michael Alec told Freeze that for, I think it was 10 bags of heroin, he would take care of the situation. He proceeded then to chop up the body of Angel, stuff it in a box, and throw it in the Hudson River. Now, Michael almost got away with this, only Michael had a big mouth and wanted to be the center of attention all the time. So he started to brag that he and Freeze had killed Angel. And people didn't believe him at first, but then the body washed up. Now, Michael Alex spent 17 years in prison, and he was just released a few years ago. Cut to the video of the pew where Michael Alec and Ernie Glam are sitting on a couch or on either side of Desmond is Amazing. And they're sitting there like they're having a little kid's tea party. They have this little kid's tea set. And they're drinking tea out of these little pink cups. And they're eating candies out of these little bowls uh, of this tea set. And asking Desmond all these kind of poignant questions. Now, obviously the mother is just off camera because Michael Alec keeps referring things back to the mother. So, you know, I don't know. This is this little kid's choice. You know, this is this little kid's choice. Hey, Mom. I want to dress up like a club kid in girls' clothes and go sit on a couch next to a murderer drinking tea out of a little pink plastic cup. It's frightening. It's frightening. Frightening. And on the wall behind them is a painting that Michael Alec painted of a little girl with a green monster face and fangs jumping, skipping rope with the word Rohypnol underneath. Now, if you don't know what Rohypnol is, it's the date rape drug. How is this appropriate? How is this appropriate? I don't know. I think that the parents should be investigated. Because this is clearly not the way to raise an 11-year-old child. Um, there's also a video of Wendy, the mother, and Desmond asking questions of each other. You know, they were playing a little game where they pull a question and they ask it of the other one. And Wendy pulled a question that she asked Desmond. And the question was, what are you currently most afraid of? And Desmond's answer was, I'm afraid of being murdered. 
I'm afraid of being murdered at 11 years old? Well, keep sitting on the couch next to Michael Alec, and your dream might just come true. Keep performing in gay bars, adult gay bars at 3 o'clock in the morning. And your dream just may come true. I don't know what to say to that, so I'm going to end on that. Um, you know, food for thought. An 11-year-old is afraid of being murdered. So, those are my thoughts on the subject. I wanted to make this video because I really didn't hear any other LGBT um, thoughts on all of this other than, you know, praising this little kid for being brave, for being the future, for, uh, you know, being an advocate, being talented and creative. Well, nobody wants to stifle the creativity. Don't stifle the creativity. That's what the best thing about drag is, is drag queens are very creative and, you know, make their beautiful, beautiful costumes, you know, and they're hugely talented. Yes, they are. In an adult setting. They're adults in an adult setting. So don't stifle the creativity. Just rein it in and set limits and boundaries. So guys, tell me your thoughts on this subject down in the comments below. I'd be anxious to hear what you think. Um, am I right? Am I wrong? I don't know. I just know that at 11 years old, this kid should be enjoying sixth grade and his friends at school and dances and, you know, getting an education. So, guys, as always, be happy, be healthy, be safe. Don't get fleas. And I'll see you next time, okay? Bye.